of OAN like anyone can even know that. Hi friends, today I'll be doing a CTA from TryHackMe called Basic Pen Testing. In this beginner-friendly room, we'll run Nmap and discover a SSH server, a few web servers, as well as Samba servers. We'll use GoBuster to enumerate directories on the web server and we'll discover some hidden text files. Further, we'll run enum for linux on the Samba servers and we'll discover two usernames. We'll then use this one username in combination with Hydra and brute force the SSH server. Once we're on the box, we'll discover that we're able to read the private SSH keys of another user. We'll then copy this private key and back on our box, we'll use SSH for John to crack the passphrase of this private key. This will then allow us to SSH in using the private key as the other user. And this user has access to a password backup file, which is basically kind of the grand goal of the CTF. Enough of the dilly dally. Let's get to it. And so the first thing I did is I just uh, uh, spun up a Kali Linux VM machine and I used OpenVPN to connect to the TryHackMe server. After this, I spun up the machine here and we can see the IP right there. So let's quickly just have a look and see if we can connect to that machine. And we see that we can. Okay, so the first question basically just asks us to deploy the machine and you can see we've done that. Next question asks us to find the services exposed by the machine. And so whenever you see any question regarding services or ports or anything like that, that obviously refers to port scanning. Now there are a few different port scanners out there, but of course uh, the most popular is our good old friend uh, Nmap. And so let's run nmap. I will enumerate for standard versions as well as run standard scripts. And we are at 236.153. And here we can see our results. We can see we have a few different ports and services open. First off, we have our good old classic friend SSH over 22. And we also have a web server running over port 80. And then 139 and 445, we can see we're running Samba SMB on Linux. And then here are two somewhat more unusual ports. 8080 is not that unusual. It's uh, also usually for a HTTP server. Uh, we can see something else running there, which is actually an Apache Tomcat. And then 8009 looks like an Apache J serve, so another web server. Right, as always, I recommend you always copy and paste all these results or take screenshots because we'd always want to perhaps return to this information later. If we ever reach a dead end, you know, we can always look if any of these web servers or any of the services running here are vulnerable. But for now, whenever I see a web server, I always just like to see if perhaps there is a, a website. All right, so and we get something like a, you know, work in progress or undergoing maintenance. Uh, let's quickly just jump into the source code and see if there's anything there. And there's some kind of like cryptic reference here to dev notes section, which might indicate there's some information there. Let's quickly see if perhaps this exists. Dev, no, maybe dev note. Still not. So at this point, we can't really obviously see any other information on the web server. So let's use something like Ferex Buster or Go Buster to enumerate it and see if there's any hidden directories. All right, so we'll use Go Buster and we'll enumerate for directories. We'll specify the URL. And then finally, we'll specify the word list we wanna use. In this case, I'll be using the famous and popular sec lists from Daniel Misler. Uh, which if you don't already, you should certainly um, get clone onto your computer. And we'll use this specific word list. All right, let's run it. And while it's still running, we can see immediately something called development came up. Uh, let's go have a look at that even while GoBuster is still running in the background. If that's a dead end, we can always come back. And we see development, let's get that bigger. And we can see there's two text files there. Let's have a look at both of them. Messing around with struts. And they mention a, a version there. Let's just write that down. And we can see we obviously saw Samba, but there's a confirmation that SMB is set up and running and the Apache. All right. Now the interesting thing we can notice is there's one user with a K and there's one user with a J. And J, this is a message for J from K. And we can read here that basically what they're saying is that their password is too easy to crack uh, with brute force. Uh, so basically asking them to change the password. Now let's assume that they haven't done so yet. And this kind of indicates to us that uh, J would be a user that uh, if we can at least find out that what their username is, uh, that we would be able to crack their uh, password potentially. 
Right, so let's just quickly go back here. Let's see. Uh, find the services exposed by the machine. Of course, we got that with nmap. Uh, what is the name of the hidden directory? We know, of course, that's development. And now it's saying to basically use some brute forcing to find the password. Okay, so let's run a Samba or SMB enumeration script, uh, which might leak some info to us, which we could potentially help during our brute force. So right on Kali Linux, you should have something called enum for Linux pre-installed. Uh, so let's just run that. We'll use A to specify the uh, IP. And let's run it. All right, guys, so once again, the script is still running. This could actually take quite a while, but I'm just kind of bringing us back here because you can see right here now, we have enumerated two users named K and Jan, which most likely obviously refers to the K and J in the communication. So once again, I'll keep enum for Linux running in the background. Uh, but now that we have two usernames, uh, why don't we go and see if perhaps we can brute force a password all right, guys, so you can, as you can probably recall in the messages uh, on the web server, the username with the weak password was the one that started with J, in other words, in other words Jan. So let's run Hydra. And lowercase, because we know what this is, it's fixed. The username is Jan. And then capital P, because this we're going to read from a word list, right? Um, and the word list is, once again, something that's pretty common and popular, in this case, rock you and then uh, we'll be brute forcing ssh 10 10 2 3 6 1 5 3 let's go all right friends i'm back you can see we've been running for just about over seven minutes um but we were able to successfully crack the password which is armando cool so let's go check in back with our questions oh it's gonna expire soon so let's give ourselves some more time here and so we use brute force to find the password. The username we know now is Jan. And the password is Armando. It's asking us which service we're gonna use to access the server in all caps. And we can most likely guess right now it's going to be SSH. All right, friends. So let's go ahead and do just that. We'll SSH in as Jan to Two, three, six, seven, one, five, three. And we'll say yes. It's going to ask for the password, which we know now is Armando. And we're in. Cool. So let's see where we are. We can see there's one other file here called lishst, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but we can notice here that only roots can read and write this file. Um, so we can confirm that, but you know, indeed, we're not allowed to, to access that file. Okay, so the first thing we can obviously do when we land on a box like this is run a script like lin-enum or lin uh, These are incredible tools, um, but before we go straight to the automated route, I like to just kind of like poke around a little bit at least uh, and see if there's anything interesting we can explore kind of manually, right? So let's just go back to the home directory. Let's see what's going on here. And here's pretty cool. We can see the directory of K right there, which was, of course, the other user um, that we saw on the box. And so let's go into K's directory. And very cool, there's some kind of like password backup file. Uh, but unfortunately, we can see since we're not K, we cannot read or write it. So the only other thing that really that's interesting for me here is seeing if there's any chance that we can perhaps access her private SSH key. And we can see that here is just the, what you can think of as a major flaw in the security, uh, which is that K has a private key right here, uh, but we're actually allowed to read it. And so all it would take for us now really is to cat out this key uh, so all we need to do now really is copy and paste this private key uh, onto our system, onto a terminal on our system. Then we can use that to SSSH in as K, uh, and then hopefully we can access the password backup file, right? Uh, so I've copied this, so let's open a new terminal. All right, now that we've copied the private key and we're back on our own box, really all we need to do 
is save it as a file here. So I pasted it, control O to save and exit. Uh, so let's just have a look at the files here. And we can see right there's IDRSA, uh, but we can see uh, all the permissions here. Uh, we really want to simplify these permissions right now. Uh, it's a 644 uh, because SSH won't actually allow that. So we're just going to modify it to 600, uh, with, which only allows root to read and write, right? Uh, now all that's really left to do is to SSH in. Uh, before we simply wrote SSH and then immediately followed by the username at the IP. Uh, but in this case, because we're using a private key, we'll signify that with uh, tack I. And this time now we are K. And we can specify the IP again. And we can see one issue immediately is that the key itself actually has a password. But fret not, because for this we have a brilliant tool that's part of the John the Ripper tool suite uh, called SSH to John. And so this is kind of a two-step process. Uh, first, we have to run a Python script that's part of the John the Ripper suite uh, called SSH to John. Uh, we're going to basically feed it the ID RSA, the private key, and it's going to output a text file. And that text file we can then feed into John the Ripper, the actual application, and it's going to attempt to brute force and crack uh, the passphrase for the private key. And we can specify ID RSA. And we can obviously just call this anything. I'm just going to call it output.txt. And we can see right there we have output.txt. Okay, so now that we've completed that first step, uh, we can actually just run John and we can basically feed this text document that we just generated to, to John um, and it will attempt to brute force crack it. Uh, but let's specify a word list. Um, and once again, we're going to go for rock you. And we can see it almost immediately is able to crack it and the password is beeswax. And so now we can just run the exact same command we ran before, uh, specifying the private key. Once again, it's K10102361533. And now it'll ask for the passphrase and we can just say that it's beeswax. And now we are in as K, great. And we can see once again the password backup file. Uh, so let's just go ahead and cat that out. And we can see it's a pretty much an unbrute forcible password. Um, and this is most likely the answer to one of our questions. So let's go check in on that again. Uh, what is the name of the other user we found? Uh, this was of course K. And what can we do with this other user? Well, we could obviously copy her a private key, put it on our system, uh, crack that with John the Ripper and then SSH in. And final question is the password that we obviously just got, which was in the home directory of K. Booyah! And that's it, friends. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That was obviously a very rudimentary box, but I enjoyed it because it really covered a lot of different kind of essential bases. I'll be back soon with another CTF walkthrough. Until then, peace out.